Welcome friends to another r slash am I the jerk video. Honestly, we all might be jerks, but one way to prove you're not a jerk would be to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our first story of the day is by Token Girl Engineer. Am I the jerk for saying at a recruiting event that I'm trotted out as the token girl engineer for every recruiting event? I work at a tech company. I'm one of two women in a technical role, and the other is very introverted and wouldn't be great at recruiting. So every time there's a recruiting event, I get voluntold for it. It was especially frustrating, and for me, because my whole team's under crunch time, and a day I spend recruiting is a day I have to make up later. I was at a recruiting event at a local college, and a young woman who was thinking of applying asked how the diversity at my company was. It looked good from our panel and promotional materials. Side note, almost every person of color, woman, or queer presenting person on the promo materials has either quit or never worked there in the first place. I answered honestly in front of a small group. Well, there's two women in technical roles, and as one of them, it sometimes feels like working two jobs. One is an engineer, and one is the token girl engineer who gets pulled away from work for every photo op or recruiting event. Honestly, if you like being a trailblazer and are prepared to take on the extra unspoken PR as the girl engineer, you might find a role here fulfilling. But if you prefer keeping your head down to focus on the technical side, it's easier to do that at a company where there's more gender and racial diversity. She appreciated my honesty, but the manager who was running the event told me to leave. I have a meeting with HR and my manager tomorrow. I don't think my opinion will be any news to them, as I've already told them I'm not interested in being assigned to photo ops or recruiting disproportionately because of my gender, and I've been told that it's important for me to be there to help recruit a more diverse staff since the company's trying to improve. I feel like they're mad that I said the quiet part out loud at the recruiting event, but it was an honest answer to the question, and I keep on being brought to these things for my unique perspective and whatnot. I think they might also see themselves as doing something good, trying to do outreach to a more diverse applicant pool, and see me as ruining that. Am I the jerk for what I said about my job? Personally, I think OP is totally not the jerk. If anybody goes to these functions and they're asking questions, it's because they actually want to know. So OP being honest and saying, yeah, in reality, there's only two girls here and I'm the one that gets plastered everywhere saying, look at all the women that work here. That's the kind of thing that the possible applicants want to know about. Yeah, it's not a good sales pitch for the company, but that's not what the people there are wanting to know. Do you think OP participating in this for the company has some level of responsibility to try to sell the company to these people? Or do you think a negative but honest answer is what OP should say? Let me know in the comments down below. Our next story is by Ava Martinez, 1979. Am I the jerk for calling my husband unreasonable for only wanting to invite people he knows personally to our son's birthday party? My son is nine years old. He moved to a new school months ago and made a lot of friends there. In the past, he suffered from anxiety and got treated poorly, so I'm happy and relieved he's happy in his new school. So his 10th birthday is coming up, we want to host a party and invite people over. I met a few moms of the kids that are friends with my son and who helped him with his anxiety big time. My husband found out and said that he won't allow any guests he doesn't know personally to attend the party. I told them these women are my friends and their children are our son's friends, which means a lot. He said it's better this way and that I should respect his decision. I kept arguing and tried to get him to understand the party guests he doesn't know or want are our son's friends. He refused to listen and turned down any further discussion, then told me to drop it after saying that he's the parent and that this is his son. But he's my son too and having his friends there will strengthen his bonds with them. I called him unreasonable, which made him so upset, he rushed out and refused to return my calls. He texted later that I was being disrespectful of his authority and rude for calling him unreasonable. But looking at his logic of wanting to invite his family and friends and not allow our son's friends or their moms just because he doesn't know them personally seems illogical to me. Am I the jerk? I agree wholeheartedly with OP that this is just totally unreasonable. OP is not the jerk. Kids have birthday parties. Those kids invite their friends. And surprise, those friends have parents. 
I don't know what antisocial bunker OP's husband wants to live in, but you might as well buy him a hazmat suit as well, cause seems like human contact is almost a no-go there. This next story is by Franny Putnam. Am I the jerk for sticking up for my abusive nanny, 38-year-old female, instead of my boyfriend, 28-year-old male? The past 24 hours have been so bizarre. I'm hoping somebody can shed some light. Maybe I'm missing some abuse victim behavior or paranoia from my boyfriend's past. My boyfriend and I have a three-month-old child and I've recently hired a nanny we'll call Elle to help while I'm at work. Work from home, but impossible to care for colic baby while on Zoom calls. We have ring cams both on the exterior and interior of our home facing door access points. Our nanny knows this as we've informed her before taking the job. Yesterday afternoon, once she left, my boyfriend, also worked from home, ran into my room and starts panicking saying, we have to fire Elle, she's abusing the baby. I immediately saw red and started screaming, what the freak, what did she do to him? What did she do to him? Over and over and started freaking out. My boyfriend just said, come here, watch this, and shows me the ring history on his phone. While we were both in office Zoom calls, the video shows Elle bringing baby's changing mat and a diaper out to the living room to change him. Right when she finishes changing him, he has a blowout poop, like could literally hear and see it on the cam, which makes her jump, but she laughs and says, good job little guy, of course right after I put you in a new onesie too, guess who's going to be a naked baby. She gives him a kiss on the forehead and then takes off his diaper and onesie and leaves the shot. You can then hear the bathroom vent and water running. She returns in view 15 minutes later and baby has wet hair and a new onesie. My boyfriend starts looking at me and says, See? She can't be in this house again. I told him what is he talking about. The baby blew out and she changed him. That's not abuse, it's childcare. He gets irate and says, Am I blind? He keeps insisting that she clearly tried to get him unclothed and then kissed him. She's obviously grooming him. He says who knows what she did while he was in the bath. I start getting irritated since he rang the alarm bells for what I can see is no reason. As someone who was groomed by much older men in my teens, I told him he didn't know what the word meant and that he's being irrational throwing out the word abuse. He starts tearing up and goes, why don't you believe me, we caught her on video, and now refuses to discuss it further. He said he can't believe I'm standing up for an abuser and doesn't want Elle to be alone with our son ever again. Am I the jerk? Um, I don't think OP's the jerk, and I also am really failing to see the logic from the boyfriend. I feel like there is some level of insecurity or subsurface something or another going on here because from what op described i think that sounds like fairly normal nanny behavior right all the best to op for navigating through the situation going forward because it feels like it might be messy no pun intended this next story is by throwaway 6283947 am i the jerk for telling my stepdad it's not my job to be a good influence for his kids This is the dumbest argument I've ever had with adults. I'm 16 year old female, the steps are 14 year old female, 10 year old male, and 9 year old female. My mom and their dad have been dating a little over a year and are engaged. We just all moved into a new place together because the parents want to blend the families and no one but them are happy about it. The steps and I made an agreement before they moved in that we all just leave each other alone because none of us want a new family, but if they need an emergency lift or help with something when the parents aren't around, that's fine. The am I the jerk issue started because I'm a serious athlete, so my lifestyle has to be pretty healthy. I work out a lot and I meal prep most of my own food to make sure I keep up with my nutrition plan. The step family have a very different way of doing things and that's causing some friction. I don't give a freak what shape or size they are, just to throw that in there, it's none of my business. But stepdad started like using me as an object to listen to the kids. OP always eats really healthy, we should probably all be doing that. And maybe OP could give us some pointers and we could do a family gym night, that kind of thing. It's really upsetting the 14 year old, especially because I think she's kind of sensitive about her size, and having me around isn't helping with that already. Over the weekend, I was making a shopping list for meal prep for the week, 
when stepdad brings the 14 year old in and says, Hey OP, stepsis would like to try your meal plan out, can you walk her through it? This is a dumb ask anyway, my diet won't work for her because I spend a lot of extra calories a day most days and I'm not a nutritionist to figure out what she needs but also she looks like she wants to die on the spot. So I say, stepsis, do you really want to do this? She says no, so I tell her dad that he probably needs to just back off because this is real sucky for everyone. He says, I just think her seeing how you do things would be a good influence. And I'm like, I'm not here to be a good influence on your kids. That's your job. So now I'm in trouble for being disrespectful. And we had to have this big family meeting about all getting along and helping each other. And I got in more trouble for telling them that's rich because they didn't care what any of us thought about anything when they were making decisions. But I don't think really any of this is even helpful. Like, it would be different if the other kids wanted to get fit. It's still not a job for me, but I could try to do a support. This is definitely a situation of a circular hole that is having a square peg pounded as hard as they can into it. Come on OP, if you help them out with their meal plan, I'm sure the square peg will fit if you try hard enough. You might be able to get that square peg through eventually, but it's not going to be fun and it won't have been the right thing to do to begin with. This next story is by Ruin Spiritual 2187 Am I the jerk for jogging at 4am? I'm an emergency medical dispatcher, which basically means if you call 999 with an emergency and need an ambulance, there's a chance it'll go to me. It's a rewarding, if stressful, job, and some of the calls I've handled give me nightmares, but I wouldn't change my job. Some of my hours, however, are extremely unsociable, and sometimes I get home at 4am, and when I do, I have a routine. When I get home at 4am, I'll quickly change, then go for an hour-long jog while I listen to a podcast. This jog by 5am will take me to my boyfriend's bakery where we'll share a meal. Breakfast for him, dinner for me. On the days I work this kind of shift, it's the only time we can see each other. I then help him set up a little before heading back to my home and sleeping. All in all, nothing abnormal ever happens, but a new neighbor recently moved into my cul-de-sac. A woman in her late 30s or early 40s, I'm not sure. I don't know my neighbors that well as I don't often have the ability to socialize with them due to my work hours. During one of my recent jogs, I paused on my way out of the cul-de-sac on the pavement near her home to pick out a podcast on my phone, only to have her come out shouting at me about what I'm doing near her home and how I better get home before she calls the police. I quickly apologized to her and explained I'm her neighbor and just out for a jog. She didn't believe me, so in sight of her, I had to go unlock my front door to prove to her, yes, I lived here, as she kept shouting about the police. After this, she stopped and retreated back into her home, so I continued my jog. Except, she was watching me the next time I jogged, and the next, and the next each time calling out vague threats about the police and how I shouldn't be out at this time and how I was scaring her children always being out at this time. Now, I admit I'd finally had enough of this and laughed at her because I'm a 5 foot tall woman who looks like a solid breeze would blow me over. I also told her to mind her own freaking business and how only she seems like the weirdo here always watching me go for a jog at this hour. I also told her, if she called 999, to say hi to my coworkers for me. I'm not proud of how I lost my temper, but it is getting to me how she's always doing this. It wasn't until my boyfriend suggested over our shared meal that day that maybe she just had anxiety and seeing someone outside so early put her on edge and she was handling it poorly. I admit, I felt guilty after that. I'd thought me jogging for an hour after my shift was harmless but I'm used to being up at weird hours. Am I the jerk for jogging at this time? Would it freak you out if one of your neighbors did this? So admittedly, with where I'm at usually being quiet at 3, 4, 5 a.m., seeing somebody come jogging past my place, it probably would be pretty off-putting to be honest, especially if I wasn't able to recognize it as one of my neighbors. That said, if they didn't linger around and jogged off, and even if I saw like a recurring theme, I honestly might be a little on edge for a while, but I think I would get used to it. Either way though, I wouldn't go out there confronting them being like, I'll call the police. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. 
So of all these stories I've read today, which is your favorite and why? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you haven't yet, if you could like and subscribe, that would mean a lot to me. Whatever you do, whether it's liking, subscribing, turning notifications on, all of it helps grow this channel and I appreciate the heck out of it. So until next time, I'll see you all tomorrow with some more stories.